Welcome back. This is David Rankin with the Rankin Studio. Today we're going to be going over some LRGB CCD astrophotography post processing. So, if you have a monochrome CCD camera and you capture a sequence of luminance, red, green, and blue images, you know, with a filter wheel, and or you're thinking about getting one, and you're not sure how that whole process works with dealing with the images after you acquire them, that's what I'll be covering today. So, Here's a picture of Bode's Galaxy that I recently took with a monochrome Attic 414 EX. Uh, pretty nice new camera, very sensitive, and I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, this image is a little messed up. The stars are a little oblong because the spacing on my coma corrector was a little off, but I fixed that since then. This was kind of like one of my first test shots with the new CCD. Uh, it turned out pretty sweet. I like the uh, detail on the Galaxy that came out. So I'm going to go over how I... Uh, stack all these images in Deep Sky Stacker, and then post-process them in Photoshop. All right, so let's load up Deep Sky Stacker. And then, um, all right, so I don't know if you're, you might not be familiar with this program, but it's pretty simple to use. Uh, basically, you're running down the left side here. And, you know, as you work your way down, you're going through the process of stacking your images. So to start off, we're going to start off in this registration and stacking tab. And then we're going to open up our picture files. So this is the folder that contains my light images, which are the luminance red, green, blue images that make up the galaxy. And you can see these ones are named L. And then these ones are R for red, green, etc. You know, LRGB. So I'm going to just grab them all and then open them up. Then run over to the dark files. I have a set of darks that I took, which you want to subtract from your light frames to remove hot pixels because they will show up. Um, so with all these images loaded in, they're listed here. So the first thing I want to do is check them all. And then right here. And then I'm going to run down to uh, register checked pictures. Okay. So under here, I'm going to look at uh, register already registered pictures. So I'm going to check that. Uh, just in case you had already registered them. And then uh, automatic detection of hot pixels. Uh, for registration, this works pretty well. And then I don't want to stack after registering, so I uncheck that because I want to stack when I want to stack. And I don't want to do it right after registration for a reason you'll see shortly. And then uh, under the star detection threshold, um, you know, you can play with this. If you're, not, if you're not picking up many stars in your registration process, it's probably because this is too high. I found for this set of images it needs to be pretty low. Uh, to pick up a decent amount of stars in my color frames. So I'm going to set it to around 13 and then hit OK. And it's going to chew through this and register all of my LRGB images um, for me. And then it's going to score them, which is important because as you're taking these images throughout the night, you know, there might be some drift in your field of view. And so it's kind of difficult to get all the images to line back up how they're supposed to be, you know, get them all perfectly lined back up. So the way you do that is um, you set a reference frame. And so I'm going to go down into my luminance channel after it's registered, find one that scored high, and then I'm going to set that as my reference frame, re-register all of my images with that as the reference frame, and then we'll be ready to stack the images um, after that. And I might run out of memory because I'm recording and stacking at the same time. We'll see if it throws any errors. can take a minute depending on how large your images are you know this camera's got a not a very high resolution sensor um, but it is monochrome and is a very sensitive sensor so and I really enjoy the field of view that it gives with my telescopes my fast Newtonians that I like to shoot with it's a really nice galaxy hunting setup very narrow field of view so you can see it scored all the images here under the score column and if we go down into the luminance frames, you want to find one of the luminance frames that scored pretty high. So we have 672 is pretty high, 675 is pretty high, 676 is higher. So you want to find one you know that scored the highest or one of the highest. Um, 680 is looking pretty. Yeah, there's 681, and I'm thinking that's probably where we're at. So well, nope, down here 687. All right. So we have if you click on the image, it will preview it up here for you. Um, 
working this preview is kind of difficult. You think you can pan around in it. I haven't figured out a way to do that yet. But if you use your middle mouse button, you can kind of scroll in a little bit, you know, and scroll out. And then up here, you can stretch it just for a preview, you know. So if I pull the gray slider in, it's going to stretch the image and kind of give me a preview of what the data looks like. And that looks pretty good. So just choose one of your images that has a pretty high score. And then what you want to do is after you choose that image, um, I'm going to go with frame 9. You want to right click on the frame and go use as a reference frame. Get a little star by it. Now that we've set the reference frame, I'm going to go back into register, check pictures, and register already registered pictures with a reference frame. And let it chew through this. All right, we're back, and uh, the registration process is done using the reference frame. So from here, we can actually start stacking the images, uh, which is the fun part. So the first thing you need to do is uncheck all pictures. <clears throat> and then we're going to run up to the top and then recheck all of the dark frames. And so you can select them all by selecting the top one, then holding shift, and then selecting the bottom one. And then right-click on that selection and then check them. And then I'm going to run down and start with the luminance. Uh, so I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom, do the same thing, click on the bottom luminance, scroll up to the last luminance frame in that list, select them all, and then check them. And then I'm going to go check, uh, I'm going to go stack the checked pictures. And uh, so here you get a preview, you know, you got 19 frames, an hour and 35 minutes of exposure. That's good. Uh, run into your stacking parameters, and then, you know, the result is just going to be standard. The light, I like to use median. Dark, I like to use median. Uh, hot detection, hot pixel detection and removal. And then alignment, uh, automatic, seems to work fine. Um, intermediate files, I just leave that to default. And then cosmetic, I leave these unchecked because I found that when you check them, uh, you can end up with stars that kind of look like ghosts of stars. And, uh, you know, I haven't had a whole lot of luck with these, so I leave those unchecked. And then the output, just leave that all stock, whatever the default settings are. Use available processors. Hit OK, and hit OK, and then it's going to chew through your dark images, create a master dark, and then it's going to, you know, subtract that from all your light frames, you know, and then register them all and stack them together for you. All right, so it computes the final picture right here. Looks pretty sweet. Um, a lot of people are tempted to use these, you know, controls down here to do post-processing in deep sky stacker but that's probably not a good idea uh, it's better to post process in another application that's more geared for that so you just want to save it out from here so you go save picture to file I'm just gonna call it L for luminance and then 32-bit uh, integer uh, compression none embed adjustments boom and then we're gonna run back into the top up here registration and stacking uncheck all of your luminance frames go into your red frames and do the same thing check them all while leaving your dark frames checked as well so it's cal it's stacking the dark frames against the uh, you know each color and the luminance channel so with all those checked you're just gonna run into uh, stack check pictures again 45 minutes tells us what we got all of our previous settings should uh, still be saved from when we just stacked our luminance frame so just hit OK Okay, once again, you know, don't worry about how it looks in here. Uh, this is a completely unprocessed, you know, a lot of raw data in here that needs to be worked with. So just save it out. 32-bit integer, all the same settings. R for red. Save it. Back into registration and stacking. Uncheck. Run up. Grab your first green frame. And then check them all. Yes, they're all checked. Make sure your darks are still checked. Of course they are and then stack check pictures boom so I'm gonna do this you know for the green the blue and then we'll come back after they're all stacked okay so if we did this right uh, should end up with four files 
luminance red green and blue um, so we're just going to take all four of these files and drag them over the icon for Photoshop 32-bit. I use 32-bit because there's some plugins that I use with uh, Photoshop that seem to only work in 32-bit. So, um, and they're very useful plugins. We'll go over them. So here we are. We have our RGB images in Photoshop. And so first thing I like to do is run in and stretch them using the levels tool, not the curves tool. And one thing that's important to remember here is that when you're stretching your images in a linear stretch, you don't want to pull in this white slider here uh, because you can see what happens to the stars. If I do that and you zoom in, the star has completely blown out. We lost the information here. It's all white. It's gone. So you don't want to pull that slider in because um, you want to keep that nice look that they have with the spikes and you can see the round part of the star. And, you know, the color will be lost if you do that in the color channels, too. So, it's one thing worth remembering. So, image adjustments, levels, we're going to pull the gray point slider in instead. And then hit OK. Image adjustments, levels. Pull the uh, dark slider in. And then here's another mistake you don't want to make. Uh, there's a foot of the histogram here. And if you go in past that foot of the histogram, uh, you can see that you're clipping your blacks. So, if you pull this one in, you clip your whites. If you pull this one in too far, you clip your blacks, which you don't want to do because uh, it doesn't look right. So, you know, always leave that out here somewhere where there's still some information, you know, in the shadowy areas, the darker areas of the image, uh, which makes it look much more natural. All right. So you can see there's a gradient here up in this area. It's bright. Down in this area, it's not. Uh, we'll fix that in a minute. Go in and do the same thing for each color channel. Levels, pull it in. Levels, pull it in. And the same thing for the blue channel. Okay, go back to the red. Adjustments, levels. Pull your dark slider in. Again, don't overclip the blacks. Make sure you have some information there. Adjust that gray point slider. Green, same thing. Levels, we're going to pull that back in this way without clipping the blacks. Get it to where it looks just about right. And then blue, same thing. Levels, we're going to pull this in. Not too far. <laughs> looks pretty good. Now for the uh, fit the screen, fit the screen, fit the screen. Okay. So for the LRGB images, uh, they're ready now to convert down to 16 bits. Because remember, we're in 32 bits right now. So image mode, 16 bits per channel. Change from local adaptation to exposure and gamma, and just hit OK. That's all you got to do. Mode, 16 bits per channel. OK. Exposure and gamma. All right, so these are all now in 16-bit workspace. And so there's a really neat set of tools by a guy named, I think it's Noel Carboni. And I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right, but I've used these tools for years. They're awesome. And uh, they're actually a set of actions for Photoshop. So if you Google Astronomy Tools version 1.6, um, you know, he'll walk you through on his website how you can acquire these actions. They're very affordable. And, you know, how you can install them into Photoshop so you can use them. Uh, these are indispensable. These are amazing actions that he's put together here to really help your processing workflow along. So I'm going to run one of these actions on every one of my color channels. And the action that I'm going to run is deep space noise reduction. So it's really just as simple as clicking on it and hitting this play button right here. Now the window I'm working in is the actions of windows. And you're going to see me going between a lot of different windows in Photoshop. Like the history window, the information window, the channels inside the layers window, the path, not the past. But anyway, if you see me go through a window and you are not sure where that is in Photoshop, you can find them all under windows. So, you know, just look in here if you're having a hard time finding one. So this is my history window. I'm going to go into my actions window, choose deep, spo deep space noise reduction, and then I'm going to run that on every one of my color channels, not on the luminous channel. Because the luminous channel actually has most of your detail, and you'll see that later when we compile the images. Uh, the color images are not really where a lot of the detail in your final product comes from. The, that's where the color comes from. The luminance is where all the magic happens. Um, deep space noise reduction. Now I'm working on my green channel and my red channel. All 
All right, I'm gonna show you kind of what this did. Actual pixels. Just holding the space bar when I'm on the magnification tool and that gives you your hand tool so you can move around pretty easily in the interface. Um, so the background looks pretty clean, but when I go back to my 16 bits per channel, you can see it gets very noisy. So there's a lot of noise in here and it just softens it up real nice without over softening the galaxy. So it's a very awesome set of tools. That's the first tool we're gonna use in that set. Um, and so in the luminance channel, we also need to convert it down to 16 bits per channel, same way we did the other ones, exposure and gamma. And then there's another tool I like to use on these uh, luminance channels um, called Gradient X Terminator, and it works really well uh, for killing these gradients in the background. So what I'm going to do is I found that it works best when you stretch the image quite a bit before you run it. And so I'm going to go into a layer and then create a new adjustment layer called levels. And hit OK. And then I'm going to stretch the image a little bit before I run this gradient exterminator tool. Just to kind of bring out that gradient. Kind of exacerbate it. Really show it out here. So dark here, light there, not good. You know, and this could be some natural, you know, there's some integrated flux nebula around this galaxy. There could be some of that happening, but I, I really want to kill it. So uh, go into your magic wand uh, selection tool. Uh, I have my tolerance set to one right now. And then I'm going to click. And then make sure you have the second option here clicked, which is uh, add to selection. So you're adding to the selection each time you click. And then I'm just going to kind of add to the selection all the way across, leaving the galaxy and stars unselected. Run into filter. RC Astro, Gradient X Terminator, start off with coarse, medium, and hit OK. And nothing happened because I selected the wrong layer. So I'm on my adjustments layer. I need to go back a history step, click on the background, filter, RC Astro, Gradient X Terminator, OK. And voila, it's like magic. Control D, deselects. Click again with the magic wand tool. You can see it automatically selected everything that time because the gradients are much better. Go back into filter, RC Astro gradient exterminator, medium and high this time. Do it again, control D, and fantastic results. Let's go back to before the gradient exterminator and take a look at it. So that's before, that's after. Awesome tool. Then you can just simply go in and grab this layer drag it down to the trash can, remove it, remove it, and you're back to where you were with a really nice smooth looking background in your luminance channel. And so now we're gonna go in and combine the LRGB images into the final product that we can start tweaking. Okay, so here we are, and we have our red, green, blue images ready to combine into a color final result with our luminance channel and I'm gonna show you how to do that so the first thing we're gonna do is select the luminance channel go control A to copy everything control or to select everything control C to copy everything and then control N for a new layer and um, so what it did is it took what was on the clipboard and it's gonna create our new document based on those values so the width height resolution color mode are all gonna be the same as what we copied but we want to change the color mode to RGB color and then okay so what this did is it created a new document for us, and it has channels now, and the channels, in the uh, channels tab of the RGB document we just made. And so we're going to paste, you know, the red, green, and blue documents into the red, green, and blue channels. So we're going to go red, control A, control copy, control C. We're going to run over to this document, click on channels, select the red, and paste it in there. Go back to the green, control A, control C, back to our new document, paste it in the green channel, and then the blue, control A, control C, back to the document, paste it in the blue channel. And then if you select this top RGB channel, it shows you the combined value of all of those layers. And voila, we have a colored image. So make sure that top one is selected. Go back to layers, deselect it. So the luminance channel, we're not going to add it to the actual channels. We're going to add it as a separate layer. So let's rename the background layer to RGB and then go over to your luminance channel, control A, control C to copy and then paste it right on top of that and rename it to Loom. 
now we have you know just a black and white image because we need to change the blending mode of this layer to luminance so right here it's set to normal we're going to drop that down to luminosity and voila we have color uh you need to actually click after you select luminosity in the layers area to commit to it um, or you might actually change it like i just did so here we have it um our lrgb image combined in photoshop and ready to process and so we're going to go over some of the techniques that i use to process the color image to get our final result so the first thing i like to do is click on the color data down here and add in a layer adjustment so layer new adjustment layer of hue and saturation to get started and then i'm going to crank the saturation way up you know like 72 75 ish around there and voila looks like crap uh the background it's way too green definitely needs some color balance help on this image so one of the easiest ways to really balance out the color and get the background removed um, out of your RGB layer is click on the RGB layer go into layer new adjustment layer and this time choose levels and um, so to get started uh, what I like to do is just kinda go into each one separately like the red channel pull in the red you know near the foot of the histogram because we're not gonna be using much of the dark area of the color channel and then you know pull the red slider in a little bit you know and then go into the green and do the same thing pull the green slider in a little bit and then go into the blue do the same thing so you're just going to kind of go between these three channels and tweak them each individually until you get a color balance that you're satisfied with and you know if you're not too experienced with this one easy way to kind of get you in the ballpark is to look at other images that astrophotographers have produced to the same object and that'll get you in the ballpark you know when you're color processing So that's all I'm doing here. So that's looking pretty good. So now that I have that set, I don't want uh, the color information from the background of the color layer because it's very noisy. And, you know, the luminance, you know, will give us a nice gray, smooth background and it's not as noisy. So what I'm going to do is go back to the RGB uh, selection and then grab the foot of the histogram. And this time I am going to clip it. I'm just going to clip it right out. Boom. So as you see, as I clip this, the color starts going away from the galaxy as well. So when you clip it all the way out, you have no color. So you want to clip it just out of the background. Right about there. After you do that, run back into each channel, tweak it a little bit more to make sure you don't have any tints on the galaxy that you don't like. Kind of a green halo around it right now. I don't like, so I'm gonna clip the green a little bit more. I clipped the halo out, but it also changed the composition of the galaxy, so I need to pull the gray slider back in to get some more green back in the galaxy. <laughs> so very fine adjustments here, are all you need. Not too dramatic. can be a little hit and miss you know and this is a real quick overview um, sometimes I'll spend four hours just tweaking very carefully these adjustments to get to where I want to be in the image um, so yeah we need to work on that some more there's still a green halo around it but uh, for the next step I'm gonna run into the luminance channel and then I'm going to do a adjustment layer of curves on it and do a standard S curve to get the contrast in the image. So we're going to pull the darks in a little bit, pull the midtones up. And the quarter area is kind of blown out, so I'm just going to roll with that and blow it out some more. Make it a little brighter than I probably should. And you don't want to clip your blacks all the way down, you know, it just doesn't look as good. You know, it's good to leave a little bit of a little bit of something in the background there. And it looks all right. Blowing the core out, that's fine. A little bit of contrast in the dust lanes. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to go back into my layers, 
my levels on my RGB layer and just keep tweaking these a little bit. Get rid of that green. I think I'm a little too heavy on the clipping. It's looking a little better. So you're not using much of the background data from your RGB layer. Um, see if I turn off the luminance channel. Not a lot going on there. Um, the luminance is really where the magic comes in and brings that information out for you. It's pretty cool. And um, it's kind of where you get that characteristic look of an LRGB CCD astrophotograph. So you can keep tweaking these. See, as I go in, you'll notice that the color actually starts leaving the galaxy, you know. So you don't want to go too far in. You want to just clip it out of the background, mostly. Green. Really fine adjustments here are all you need. Um, all right, I think that looks pretty good. Still a little bit of a, maybe a purple tint to it. Again, you can really spend a lot of time tweaking these colors out. All right, that looks good. Still a little too purple. So that means I need to mess with my red gel. That looks better. That's a little too blue. Of course, I might have oversaturated it too. Let's go a little bit back this way. Yeah, you can really overdo the saturation on it. Go into actual pixels. Give us a much better idea of what's happening here. All right, I like that. That looks good. So now what I'm going to do just to kind of wrap this up is um, show you how to selectively sharpen certain areas of the image. Like you might want to sharpen up the dust lanes a little bit. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do pretty quickly here. Uh, the way I like to do this is selecting the luminance layer and dragging it down to this icon, which creates a copy of it. And then I'm going to use the layer mask to kind of mask in the areas that I want after I sharpen this luminance layer. So click on the new luminance copy, go up to... Filter, sharpen, unsharp mask, and you know you gotta play with some of these settings. The radius, you know, if you go too high, you'll get halos around the stars, and the amount of sharpening, uh, you can really sharpen the noise a lot if you do that. But there's not as much noise in the galaxy, and that's the only part that I'm gonna mask in. So I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen that quite a bit. <laughs> and so you know, you can see the uh, if you click actual pixels, this is the sharpened, unsharpened. Sharpened looks quite a bit better. So, but I don't want to sharpen the background because uh, if you leave it unsharpened, you get a really nice depth of field look. Um, so I'm going to go in and click on this new luminance copy on this icon down here, which creates a new layer mask. Because this layer is white, it's revealing what's on this layer. If I make it black, it's going to hide everything that's on this layer. So going down here, I'm going to swap this over to black. And, you know, if you have to go in there and choose black, no big deal. And then click on the paint bucket tool, make sure you select this luminance layer mask and then fill it black. And you can see immediately we went back to the blurry version because nothing is being revealed. Now you can run into your paintbrush, switch back over to white, and if you paint white it's going to reveal what's on this sharper layer. So I'm going to paint the areas that I want to sharpen in. Uh, you know, you can change your size and hardness by right clicking. Um, so go ahead and just start painting in there. And you don't want to paint the larger stars too much because it looks funky if you only have some sharp stars and then some aren't quite as sharp. So I'm just kind of more interested in sharpening up the, you know, nebulosity areas that have the hydrogen alpha emission nebulas and the arms, the dust lanes, just the really interesting parts of the galaxy. And it's a very subtle effect, but it can go a long way to improving the image. So there it is. Uh, it's been sharpened selectively, but uh, 
There's some pretty hard edges transitioning between where it's been sharpened and where it hasn't been sharpened in this layer mask. So I'm going to refine that by right clicking on it and go to refine mask and we can see where we painted and then just feather it a little bit with this slider here to get some better transitions. Hit OK. And that's it. Um, I'm pretty happy with that just for a quick process and um, I hope you found the techniques that I went over in the video useful. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave a comment on the video. And I'll provide a method to download this uh, data if you want to follow along in the video. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.